Welcome to the Metamorphosis Show, the half hour or longer broadcast created to empower you to get control over the way you think, the way you eat, and the way you move. It's been raining a little bit in Venice Beach, and so my connection's a bit shoddy. Bear with me. If it doesn't work, if I have to stop this again, uh, I'll just record it on the phone and then post it later. So today I'm talking about single leg work, and this has been covered quite a bit by guys like Mike Boyle, Chad Waterbury, to a lesser extent, Charles Poliquin for a really long time. Um, and the biggest benefit if you're not doing any single leg work is you can begin to address imbalances in your physique and the way you move uh, just by adding a few crucial exercises. And today I'm gonna show you the ones that I think uh, are the most beneficial the most efficient, but you will ultimately, sorry, I'm going to walk off camera for a minute. Ultimately, you are going to have to decide uh, what works best for your body. Um, and that goes for anything, you know. So today I'm going to start with a reverse lunge. And I'll start with the easiest version first. Talk about why this particular movement, what it's good for, and then move up to progressions you can do. Obviously, I won't be doing any barbell work, but if you have any sort of way to, to weight these movements, a sack of flour, <laughs> um, dumbbells, kettlebells, these kinds of things, I'll show, I'll, I'll show you different variations of each and try and get through this before the rain comes back or you know some crazy leaf blowers come through. If you've watched any of these, you know it can get uh, a little bit noisy and distracting. So the first is the reverse lunge. And I do a reverse lunge rather than say a forward lunge because when you take a big step back, there's a lot less shearing on the knee. So if you are doing this particularly weighted, you know, that's, you'll see a lot of bodybuilders doing a walking lunge and that's fine if you can get away with it. There's nothing wrong with most exercises. So if you've ever heard that that's, this is dangerous or that's dangerous, it's really only dangerous if you don't know what you're doing or you're not properly warmed up or you try to go beyond your own capabilities. So I like to do a reverse lunge and I have most of my, my clients do a reverse lunge. And so the way you're gonna start that is, I like to make a fist to create tension and I learned that from Pavel Tatsulin. And you create that tension in your upper body so you can focus just on taking a big step back. So I'm gonna take a big step back and I'm gonna to lightly touch my knee and that's crucial because you don't wanna crack your knee on the ground. So it's a big step back and forward and I like to alternate I suppose you could do uh, just one side but you can fatigue it a lot faster that way and you really focus well, I mean it's totally up to you so if you can't even do that right grab your little trusty dowel or broom or whatever it is you can even hold on to something to balance and and you're just stepping back and really testing that range of motion right so if you really just can't do this or your balance is so terrible you know, that you can't do this without something to support you, that's fine. Or you've had knee issues. I, I hear this all the time from clients that have dealt with knee issues in the past. They're afraid to do lunges, right? Um, that, that hurts my knees. And in a lot of cases it does, so don't do that. But if it doesn't, you should be able to take a nice big step back while keeping your chest tall and creating tension in your upper body. What this does is really activates the glutes and hamstrings the quads as well but I really like this once you can start weighting it for developing that nice curve you know in the glute it really you can really feel the glutes being activated as you take that big step back particularly in the bottom of the glutes so if I was to do that with a pair of dumbbells you can do that just holding them at the sides a lot of people like will try and squeeze their arms like this right and it's not, about, it's not about this part. Your arms should be completely relaxed. Your chest tall, take a big step back, lightly touch the knee, and back up. Pretty straightforward. Um, I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, guys, uh, oh, I'm just gonna see who's joining. What's happening, Robin, Vladir, Eric, Aaron, and Hunter. Thank you guys for hanging out. So now I'm gonna show you um, the kettlebell version, okay? So let's say you wanna do reverse lunges, but all you have is a kettlebell. Now I suppose you could do this like a suitcase carry 
and really sort of offset either side, and that's cool. But another way is to hold it as you would for a goblet squat, which I'll address in a different episode. And then you're here, really making sure that the center of gravity and everything is, is kind of tightly compact so you can focus on doing the movement rather than balancing the weight. So you keep that married to your chest, big step back. And again, if you can get away with doing a walking lunge or you prefer that, great. I do find that in terms of longevity, there's a lot less shearing on the knee when you take a step back. So that's a reverse lunge, body weight and with weights. Next, I'm gonna show you a split squat. Oh man, I bet I'm gonna get so tired doing this shit. <laughs> so the split squat, another favorite of mine. It's terribly um, challenging, particularly as you add weight. Let's see, how does that look in frame? You can see that. Okay, so, well, you know I gotta do my left side as my best side, so let me go here. Um, so the split squat, you're basically still doing a single leg movement. The back leg is supported, and you will find, so if you could see, basically the top of my foot is here. A lot of people don't have this sort of angle mobility, and so they're gonna need to go on the top of your toe. Whatever you need, I find that if you can get to this point, eventually you stop thinking about your foot up behind you. Not a lot of people like this exercise, but it's super effective. So here you are, your front foot's hopped in front of you a decent distance that allows for you to get a decent range of motion. You're not trying to touch this back knee to the ground, but you're trying to get, again, let's say a decent range of motion in the squat. So again, I make that same fist. I'm wrapping my hand and I'm gonna sink. Chest stays tall and back up. Now what about the knee going over the toes? I thought your knee's not supposed to drip over your toes. If you have a couple hundred pounds on your back, I can see that being an issue over time. But your body is designed to do this, right? This is how people, I don't know if you've ever been to Southeast Asia, but people just hang out like this, you know, on the street. And that's because they're, they just do it more often. Most, most Westerners, we'll say, lose the hip and ankle mobility to be able to even sit like this for a second. And you can test this yourself. Most people, when they squat, their, their heels are up, right? So check real fast your hip mobility, your ankle mobility, see what happens when you just try and be, when you just try and be, when you just try and sit in this position. You should be able to get your hips all the way down, your ankles should be, uh, or your heels rather, should be flat on the ground. So, I kind of got sidetracked there, but let's go back to this. My foot's on the top. Again, if you need your trusty dowel to stay upright, a lot of people do initially with the split squat, you're going all the way down, your chest is tall, and back up. If you need to hop your foot forward a little bit so that this isn't so much shearing over the top of your leg, go ahead and do that. That's pretty straightforward. It's an it's extremely challenging exercise. Nobody likes to do it. It's not like bench press day, right? Where everyone wants a chance. i tell you what, you walk into any gym, not a bunch of people fighting to be able to do split squats. So now I'm gonna show you the weighted version and again, the top of your foot is on the top of this bench or your toe if you need it. You're coming down, your chest stays tall, and you're right back up, going through the fullest range of motion that you can manage, and you will instantly feel how challenging this is. I think I will show you one more time with the kettlebell just so that I'm extremely thorough. It's very thorough, Jeffrey. So, Again, the kettlebell is married to your chest, like so, and you're going through the exact same range of motion. The center of gravity is a little bit different. It's a little bit more challenging, I think. Actually, maybe not, they're both pretty hard. Full descent, chest stays tall, right back up. And it seems like the leg that's forward will be doing the majority of the work, but that back leg for stabilizing does a ton of work as well. Um, whew. Okay, so that is a split squat. That's a reverse lunge. Now I'm gonna move to a step up. And I don't think the frame's quite big enough, so I'll probably go out of, go out of it here at the top position. The step up is it's tricky. Most people have been doing it wrong. I did it wrong for the longest time. 
you just naturally assume that it's pretty straightforward. You step up, right? Except that if you noticed, that was me pushing off my back foot. And how many of you guys do it like this, right? If you do step ups at all, you're pushing off your back foot and that's the full range of motion. So what I wanna help you fix is that if you wanna make this super effective, you're gonna push through this heel and you're going to curl your toes up on the back foot and you're only going to lightly touch the heel of this foot on the ground. And this is what I'll show you what I mean. So my toes are up. I'm gonna push my hips back, lightly touch the heel and come back up. If you wanna know how challenging that is, get on a step anywhere. It could be a step going up some stairs and do it both ways. One, you're pushing out the back foot. Man, these step ups are easy. I don't understand why people complain about them. No, no, no. Try and do it where you're lightly touching the back foot, keeping that chest as tall as you can and pushing those hips back. This becomes immediately a far more challenging exercise. So now I will show you with the dumbbell. You can have it on the same side. You can have it on the alternate side of the leg that you're working. It's really up to you. I don't notice a huge difference. But again, you're pushing the hips back, lightly touching the heel, and coming back up. Try this one. I think if you've never done that before, you're in for a rude awakening. It's very powerful. So that's a split squat. That's a step up. Oh, yeah. So single leg deadlift. And this you will need some kind of weight. Um, I prefer dumbbells just because it's easier to do. Now, a deadlift, as you know, is a hinge movement where your hips go back, your chest stays tall, and you drive your hips through. Right, they go back and they come through. Now, when you change this to a single leg, it becomes extremely challenging. So now my leg starts back behind me, slowly lower, get that deep stretch in the hamstring, and come up and squeeze. Big stretch, come up and squeeze. Notice my back isn't rolled over like this. You want a nice arch in it. So you wanna stick your chest out like a gorilla, get that stretch in the bottom, come back up and squeeze. And you will feel that on the leg that's doing the work. So for me, my right leg, my glute is going crazy. This is a great, great exercise for your glutes. Now, if you wanna put that together with the reverse lunge, you have a monster of a movement and it looks a little bit like this. You step back, you do the deadlift. Big step back in the reverse lunge, single leg deadlift. And this, with just even very moderate weights, you will feel your glutes and hamstrings, to a lesser extent your quads, really firing. Now, all these movements, are going to be completely based on your physiology. So it doesn't matter who's telling you what you should have and what you should do. You know best and you need to be an expert on you. No one else can tell you. And I don't think I can overstate that. If you know the biggest, strongest guy in the world tells you that you need to be squatting, he has a lot of things to back that up. But if squats are terrible for your particular body type or you, you have crazy injuries or whatever, you shouldn't be doing them. You shouldn't be doing anything that causes you a bunch of pain. So I think it goes without saying with all this stuff, but you should do what's right for you. That being said, don't be afraid of discomfort. You know, that's the stuff that's gonna make you stronger. So I have one more movement I'm gonna show you and that is a pistol. Um, I'll show you with the bench first. Actually, no, I'll do two more. And all this stuff, guys, all this stuff that I'm showing you on a regular basis is so that you can train anywhere. You don't need a gym. Gym's great. You don't need it. Um, you don't need a dedicated exercise space, although that's nice. I'm trying to show you stuff that you could take anywhere from a hotel room to, you know, a jungle if need be. That's pretty awesome. If you do that, let me know. So. A pistol is really challenging single leg movement. 
and the reason why is because you are putting everything through a whole range of motion on one leg. And I will say to preface this, if you can already do three sets of 12 pistols, you're, you're beyond this little tutorial right here. Um, so you're going to push your hips back. Let's see, this is the, this is the assisted version first. So I'm going to push my hips back, sit back on the bench, and come up. And most people can sort of do this. The important thing is to go way back with your hips. If you just sort of go down like this, you're not really getting the full benefit. So really try and focus on pushing your hip way back. Don't let this foot touch the ground and come up. That would be an assisted pistol or a bench pistol. And you wanna work up to a full pistol, which I'll try not to fall over while doing this. You are gonna do the same exact motion Hips go back, chest stays tall. You can keep your hands out in front of you, make a fist, do whatever you like. I haven't done them in at least a few days. So your hips go back, chest stays tall, and right back up. You should be able to do this off of both sides relatively easily. If you're not even close to this, here I'll do one more just for symmetry, right? I don't wanna end up like a fiddler crab. Um, <laughs> if you can't do that off both sides for any decent amount of repetitions, it's something that you can definitely work up to. Uh, wow. Oh, yes. The pistol. Any questions on the pistol? Any questions on any of this stuff? Please post it, and I will answer it after I'm done. I usually hang out for about 30 minutes and answer any questions you have, how to program this stuff, how often to do it. I think with most of these body weight moves, you can get away with doing it three times a week, maybe a day in between. And if you're a natural trainee, like I assume most of you are who are watching this, you probably don't need more than about three sets per exercise uh, with the particular rep ranges we're working with, anywhere from eight to 12 repetitions. And I'll be doing a, a later cast where, a later cast, where I show you the exact progression that I use to go throughout the week uh, to progress on an exercise. And maybe next week I'll do that. Okay, so this is the one leg glute bridge. And a glute bridge you've probably seen, uh, how does that look in the frame? Maybe push it back a little bit. A glute bridge is all about your glutes and your hamstrings. And the closer your butt is to whatever your surface is you're using, the more challenging this is going to be because it's changing the pretty sure it's the angle of incidence but don't quote me on that so i'm here my hands are flat my chin is tucked and with the two-legged version which we're not talking about all you're doing is picking your hips up and squeezing your glutes and hamstrings right so this is the single leg version and it's meant to be more challenging okay so now one leg is up hands flat on the ground i'm going to drive through this heel and get my hips as high as I possibly can in this movement and squeeze my glutes like crazy. So I come up, squeeze. You'll feel that hamstring immediately get super tight. Really drive that heel into whatever surface you're working on. Do the other side that's closer to the camera so you can see. But you're trying to get the greatest range of motion and squeeze your hamstrings and glutes as hard as you can. So that is all I have on the exercises. While I'm live, is there anything else you want to know or see? Otherwise, I'll answer these all later. I'm coming close. How many reps for each do you recommend? Great question, Aaron. So I would say if you're doing these for the first time, I would only do, well, I'll lay all this out in another episode, but I like to train the full body every time just because I think you get a, a much better training response that way. And if I wanted to progress on something that I was just learning, for example, uh, the single leg glute bridge, I would do eight repetitions on each leg for three sets on, say, Monday. Let's do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? We said three three training sessions per week for strength and 
On Monday, you do three sets of eight. On Wednesday, you do the exact same thing, only now you're doing three sets of 10. And then by Friday, or whatever day three of your strength training is, you're doing three sets of 12. And at that point, you can either start working on a new exercise or you can start to progress. So if you did reverse lunges with 10 pound dumbbells in each hand, or let's say with no weight, and you did eight, 10, and then 12, by the time you can do three sets of 12 or something, it's probably time to move on to a more challenging progression. So in our reverse lunge example, we would go from body weight to maybe five or 10 pound dumbbells in each hand. And then you're starting over, you're starting at three sets of eight on day one, 10 and then 12. And if you can't get the prescribed repetitions, you sort of hang out at that weight until you can get all of it. And it's a pretty straightforward and extremely effective way to get stronger over time. So I hope that answers that question. Thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, this live, live broadcast is sponsored by the 30 minute advantage Dot com and this is an online resource for all things cold water therapy farm to table nutrition um, meditation and 30 minute workout so if you're looking to make a transformation of your own head over to 30 minute advantage.com and look at the course description and what's available there thank you all so much I will see you Monday and until then don't forget you have so much power use it wisely <laughs>